Shop organization has always been one of my biggest struggles. So this week I fixed one of the biggest problems in my shop, but I'm also gonna give you a preview for one of the bigger projects we have coming up. I had two main criteria for building these shelves. The first was being able to organize a lot of the smaller screws and bolts that I have, but the second was being able to keep all of the dust that usually piles up in my shop from settling inside cabinets and sitting on open shelves. Now I couldn't just put cupboard doors on the front of the shelf for two reasons. Number one, the doors would actually swing and hit the rails for the garage door. But secondly, it just wasn't very economical to have that much plywood really going to waste. So I'll show you what I decided to do with this later on in the video. To get you up to speed, all you've seen me do in the video so far is cut up all my plywood pieces. As always, I'll cut everything down to a rough size just so it's easier to manage and then go back to my table saw, chop saw, and my track saw to cut everything down to its final size. For sure, this is the safest and easiest way to get all your pieces consistent, especially when you're batching something out. And here's a good example of this. I had to cut the inside dividers for the lower shelf pieces and I just set up a stop block for that. I was feeling a little extra, so I decided to actually do some dados for joinery just to make things a little bit stronger, but as well, uh, it's not something that I've done before, so I wanted to mess around with this technique. I also took my time setting this up on my saw stop because this is the first time ever actually using a dado stack in my saw stop. Now, I always make sure that I rotate all of my pieces at least 30 degrees to each other. And the reason for this is you really don't want any of the teeth to touch. When you start tightening everything down, you could damage the teeth of the blades, but also you wanna make sure you do it this way just so the saw blade is as balanced as possible. Again, this is the first time using my saw stub with the dado stack blade. So I did have to make a zero clearance faceplate. And for whatever reason, this was an absolute smoke show. I don't know if I was going too slow, but I had to open the garage door and air it out for a while. The two key measurements that I had to worry about were how far the dado blade was actually going into the material, but as well the width. And these little shims that come with your dado stack are really good just for dialing your width as best as possible. For me, using physical measurements is often a lot easier than trying to measure everything out with a tape measure. You get the exact piece and the exact placement just by using your material. The first set of dados just goes at the top and bottom of the side pieces. Now, when you're measuring out your dado, you definitely need to make sure you're not measuring off the fence because the two measurements are completely different as soon as you add that dado stack. This is something I really had to pay attention to when I was adding the grooves for the bottom shelves. So I measured from the fence to the closest edge of the dado stack just to make sure that everything was aligned properly. Also, you'll notice how I'm pushing in on the material. I'm pushing at an angle towards the fence to make sure that my pieces aren't binding or twisting as I'm pushing them across the blade. So instead of cupboard doors, I opted for sliding panels. I had to route grooves on the top and bottom of the inner upper shelf as well as the top shelf. To allow the panels to slide past each other, you need to add two sets of grooves. Now the upper set of grooves needs to be a little bit deeper than the bottom set. And the reason is this is how you can hinge in the panels when you're putting them in place. I'll show you later on how I do this. During this time, we had a lot going on in the shop at the same time. So I did the dry assembly of the shelf, just sitting on top of my table saw. And I was pretty relieved that all the dados lined up. Now I should let you know that you are gonna see a lot more of Erin in these videos. She's gonna be helping me out a lot more this year. Oh yeah, sorry, I know. I'm really looking forward to just how this is gonna change the kind of content we're producing. And hey, if you do work with your spouse, any tips would be appreciated in the comments below. Instead of using wood glue, I decided to go with an epoxy, and this is just Total Boat's regular high-performance epoxy. This is gonna give us a lot longer working time, and as well, I figured I'd need an extra set of hands, so I grabbed my oldest son to come out and help me put this together. I did tack each of the corners with brad nails just to give us a little bit of grab as we were putting on the clamps, but as well as we were measuring corner to corner to make sure the shelf was as square as possible. And again, I was glad all the dados lined up. This is a pretty beefy shelf system. I actually will have plans available on my website. So if you'd like to check those out, feel free to do so. This is a great way to support the content I'm making, but also for me to give back just based on some of the designs that I'm able to make. Now I did promise earlier, I'd give you a sneak peek of one of the projects we have coming up. Now this tall drink of water helping me take the shelf down is my niece's husband, Josh. Josh and Vanessa have a YouTube channel called Destined for Wild. 
I'll link their channel below, but they're in the process of outfitting their Land Cruiser so they can drive all the way down to Argentina. So we spent a couple days working on this, and this is a video that you'll see in a couple weeks. So make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with that build. The simplest way to attach a shelf like this to the wall is just to use a French cleat. So I put the male section or female, I guess depending on how you're standing, into the back of the shelf. This would be a way to attach it to the wall once I had the mating piece mounted level and flat against the wall. I guess the nice thing about having unpainted walls in my garage is that it's pretty easy to find based on where the mutters filled in the screw holes, exactly where all the studs are. And there's my little cheat. I just put one screw in the middle. Then when I'm using my level, it's easy to adjust to make everything as straight as possible and then add my second set of screws to both sides. With the cleat in place, Aaron and I were able to <laughs> muscle the shelf into place. You can also see in the shot exactly where the rails for the garage door are and why it wouldn't have worked to have cabinet doors versus the sliding panels that we ended up going with. And of course, Aaron needed to test it for strength just to make sure it could hold enough weight. As I was working on some other projects, Aaron started the process of organizing and sorting out all of the different screw containers. These containers I bought about a year ago from Home Depot, and they were a super inexpensive way to organize all the hardware I had. With my upper bins in place, I used that to measure out exactly where I wanted my shelf to be, and I was ready to move on to cutting the sliding panels. The panels are just made of quarter inch MDF, and I just drilled a small hole in each side to make it easier to slide the panels back and forth. Nailed it. <laughs> that was awesome! That was so good! <laughs> <laughs> the dude laughing in the background is my buddy Justin from the channel Call Me Maybe. Justin was up visiting for a few days and filming something for his channel. When that video is up, I'll link it in a card above here. When the paint was dry on the panels, I was able to slide them in from the top to the bottom. This is where having that extra depth in the groove makes it easy to slide these panels easier into the grooves on the shelves. And of course, because Justin was visiting, his sticker had to be the first one added to the wall. And the final, final step was to put a little bit of paste wax in each of the tracks, just so the doors slid that much easier. Aaron's last step in the project was actually to help with some of the labeling of the small containers. To give you an idea of how long this project's been in the works, I bought these bins over a year ago, just for this project. All right, Cash. So you tell me, I keep referring to this as a cabinet, but also as a shelf. Either way, it's an amazing storage solution in this shop. I love all the organization for the smaller pieces and having the shelves up top covered so we don't have to worry about as much dust settling on the stuff that's stored is really awesome. If you're interested in building this for your own shop, for sure make sure you check out the plans that we have below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I would love to see you do that. Hopefully I've earned that. And we are really trying to wrap up content over the next little while. We have some major news coming in the next couple weeks. So hopefully you're tuned in for that. In case you missed them, here's a couple videos that we've released recently that you might find interesting. Thanks as always for tuning in and we'll see you on the next build.